keeps you bouncing around. You can film, you can talk during the public section, you're speaking, but the people behind you got pissed that you were bouncing all over the room. Given all of the circumstances, I receive this as an additional act of intimidation towards me. It feels like a threat. A reminder that not only does the chief know my address. The, the, the common denominator, guys, is Jeff D. Hartwig of the Marin Isle Police Department. Effective immediately. If we the people don't start seeing real change soon, we will begin efforts to replace anyone who has shown that they are enemies to the people. There are bad cops out there and there are corrupt cops out there. Atrociously corrupt. Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. This city council meeting took place on March 21st of 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Central Time. Upon approaching the meeting, Chief of Police of the Marion Owl Police Department, Michael Kitzmiller, approached me. His goal in this interaction was to pick a fight, get me to incriminate myself, and put handcuffs on me to prevent me from speaking out against his corrupt department, the Marion, Iowa Police Department. This is a perfect example, guys, of why you should never, ever talk to the police. And if you do, keep it to a minimum and keep the camera rolling. Here we go, guys. Yes, we got some complaints last time about so you bouncing around. Complaints? Yep. Got some complaints, huh? Yep, about you bouncing around. You can film, you can talk during the public section, you're speaking, but the people behind you got pissed that you were bouncing all over the room. So just stay in one place. That's all they're asking. Not that big a deal. Okay? It's always okay to ask. <laughs> yeah. All right. At this time, we have a public forum. Time set aside for comments from members of the public. If anyone's here to address council, please step forward. State your name and address. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listen to me today, guys. With all due respect, I'll be exercising my Fourth Amendment right under the United States Constitution. Today, I'm here to talk to you guys about a um, issue that I think any person can relate to. Even if you back the blue and you like the police, it's about protecting children from predators, guys. And qualified immunity and covering people's crimes up, it's okay when if it's a victimless crime, but when it's this type of crime, guys, it, it says something completely horrible about our justice system that the people with the cameras are doing 30 days in jail. Well, the people that do sexual offenses to children don't go to jail at all. I'm going to read you an article. It is out of the um, Cedar Rapids Gazette. It was written by Trish McAfee on June 24th, 2021. It was updated June 28th, 2021. And this is an article that's been buried, guys. Um, I've been down to the courthouse to get information. Everything's sealed. This article has been deleted off the internet because somebody doesn't want people to see this. I'm gonna read this article word for word. An 18 year old man pleaded guilty this week to possessing more than 2000 photos and videos of child pornography in 2019. Brody Thomas Hartwig, originally charged with two counts of sexual exploitation of a minor, pleaded to one of the charges. According to court documents, the other charge was dismissed as part of a plea agreement. A criminal complaint stated Hartwig possessed the photos and videos in his email accounts. Sixth Judicial Associate District Judge Anzi Johnson sentenced Hardwick on Wednesday to two years of supervised probation and gave him a deferred judgment. The means if he has no further violations and complies with conditions set by his probation officer, his conviction will be expunged when he completes his probation. Johnson also ordered Hartwig, the son of a Marion, Iowa police officer, 
to register as a sex offender and, and serve a special sentence of parole for 10 years as a result of his conviction. Hartwig was initially charged last year in Lane County Juvenile Court because he was 17 at the time. He was waived into district court, adult court, in November. Both the prosecutor and Hartwig's attorney agreed it would be in the best interest of the teen in the community to send his case to district court according to Scott's ruling. First Assistant Lane County Attorney Nick Maybank said sometimes federal prosecutors take over sex exploitation and child pornography cases, but not all the time. He didn't know if the case, if it came up in this case or not. Maybanks and Lane County Attorney Jerry Vandersanden both acknowledged that Iowa law, law allows the office to withdraw from a criminal case that is a legal conflict of interest. The fact we may be prosecuting the relative of a peace officer does not present a legal conflict of interest for our office, Vandersanden said. It is for the same reason we do not withdraw from a case where there is a peace officer is a victim. The recent case involving Stanley Donahue charged with fatally suiting a sheriff's deputy is a good example. Vanderson also said they would also withdraw and ask for an independent prosecutor if an employee or immediate relative of an employee of the office was charged with the crime. Hartwig has no other charges in district court, but in March, District Chief Lars Anderson issued a sexual abuse protective order against Hartwig for a minor. There is no indication if the order was related to the child pornography case. The case was prosecuted by Assistant Lane County Attorney Lori Craig and investigated by the Cedar Rapids, Iowa Police Department. Now, once again, guys, this happened in 2019. At the same time, in 2019, I'll be giving you guys this paperwork so you can look it over. Um, there is also a lawsuit that claims sexual harassment and threats at the Marion Iowa Police Department. Now, that's also in 2019. The, the, the common denominator, guys, is Jeff D. Hartwig of the Marion Iowa Police Department. He's got sexual problems going on at work, sexual problems going on at home, and you guys mentioned liberty and justice for all. The problem is, guys, is that if I had gotten caught with this, you know I would go to jail. No, no questions asked. If I even had this inside of my house, if my roommate had this, you know I would go to jail. I'd get the living crap beaten out of me, and my poster would be pictured. I'd be posted all over Iowa. But when a family member of a police officer does this, it's perfectly fine. You know, we'll just let him go outside, target more children. That's perfectly fine. But the person that says a cuss word, we're going to lock him up in the Lane County Jail. That is completely un-American, guys. And it is just such a double standard, the way that police officers are treated and the way that regular citizens are treated. And this has been going on for a long time, guys. It's not just a couple of dirty cops on the street. The corruption comes from the administrative staff and the command staff and the people at the top in the Marion Iowa Police Department. And just like Five I found this article that was buried, I'm gonna keep on finding more and more articles and I'm gonna keep exposing the criminal enterprise that calls himself the Marion Iowa Police Department. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Anyone else, please come forward. Welcome. Everyone in this room knows my name and knows my address. It's Bailey, for anybody else that's listening that wants to know. I don't have much to say today, but for the record, to anyone outside of this room who may be listening, I do wanna let you know what's happened since my last meeting. The city has essentially ignored me besides one event. On January 18th, I became emotional as I addressed the council again regarding targeting, threats, and intimidation towards myself and others, including children in this community. My minor child also spoke bravely to this council. How many kids have done that? I express, ex express frustration over the council requiring me to verbally provide my home address at the meeting on January 4th in front of city employees who many others have accused of intimidation. The city continued with their normal behaviors. Even though I asked them to email me when asked how I wanted to be contacted and didn't provide a mailing address, the very next day, the city allowed Mike Kitzmiller to send me a physical letter to my home address where my children live. I didn't give a mailing address. And he advised me that the tinted front window at the police department was in place to protect juvenile records. That's what it's for. Not to hide anything, to protect juvenile records. In the letter, 
He states that the mayor, every member of the city council, the city manager, the city clerk, and the city attorney were copied on this letter and aware that he was sending it. I study psychology. This is a known narcissistic tactic called mirroring. It is when an abuser finds out what triggers your emotions and specifically uses this to torment you. Given all of the circumstances, I receive this as an additional act of intimidation towards me. It feels like a threat. A reminder that not only does the chief know my address, the other powerful people in this city do as well. I also think that Kylie, the 18-year-old girl that he hired and love-bombed on TV, I think you guys should look into what happened to her because it looks like he's sending her in to uh, do illegal arrest. And then the other problem I have is that Gage here, the youngest man on your council, worked for the Gazette when this article was removed. So I hope you guys are not coercing young people that are trying to do good into doing the wrong thing. It is so disappointing, and I have never been more disappointed in so many people in my life. I hope that if you're not going to change it, I pray that someone listening does, because we are not going to be quiet. Thank you. Anyone else address council? Good evening, City Council. I, too, would like to express my Fourth Amendment rights. I come to you today with tens of thousands of Americans standing behind me, all of which feel precisely the same way that I do. I'm just one of hundreds of thousands of people who are watching the situation unfold, which, to put into perspective, is much bigger than the entire population of Marion itself. First and foremost, I want this City Council and all city councils to be reminded that their perceived power and authority is derived from the consent of those governed. And I can think that I can speak for most Americans that we're sick and tired of paying our officials to not represent us or our interests. It's a shame that the corruption plagues even our small cities, but don't be fooled. Many, many eyes are watching this play out. And history is showing time and again that the people will win. Most recently was actually just last week, when a video exposing Mayor Tiffany Haynard's corruption achieved 1.1 million views in a single day, and the people of Dalton, Illinois, voted to recall her. And if you tyrants keep it up, the Marion City Council could very well face the same level of scrutiny. I would now like to take a second to thank City Council and Mike the Cut Kitzmiller for the red light extortion cameras that were recently installed in the city of Marion. They in turn used that money to install two massive motorized gates for the Marion Police Fortress to ensure that the public is intimidated approaching their own police department. You would expect him to use some of that money to pay for some to clean the trash that is accumulated inside the fence, but that evidently is the mentality of the Marion Police Department and the City Council as a whole. You don't care. You extort the populace. You empower yourselves with that money, and then you use that power to further extort the people without even having the courtesy to keep the taxpayer facilities clean and orderly. It's simply criminal. I hope that at least some of you have the integrity to look up and understand the Constitution and the Bill of Rights to which you've sworn sacred oath to defend. And if you haven't by now, then you just further confirm how unfit for office that you truly are. I have provided the clerk multiple copies right here, so then you guys have no excuse. For, for not respecting our rights. To those of you who are guilty of, dis, of disregarding your oaths, let this be your notice to cease and desist your efforts against the people effective immediately. If we the people don't start seeing real change soon, we will begin efforts to replace anyone who has shown that they are enemies to the people. Those of you who have seen corruption around you but remain silent are also complicit. It's your obligation and your duty to blow the whistle on corruption wherever you see it. And if you continue to refrain from doing so, then you are also the enemy. A wide array of allegations befall the city council, all of which portray a severe lack of accountability, a poor leadership structure, and a desperate need of transformation and transparency. Problems such as these stem from the top of the control structure, and in this case, trickle down to even the clerks at the Marion PD. The way that we've been seeing uh, the city of Marion's representatives treat the public is despicable and downright unacceptable. And I'm here today to tell you that it's no longer going to be tolerated. If you truly care about your constituents, your oath, and your salaries, then I implore you to make yourself known. Otherwise, I can ensure you that we will replace you with someone who does. My appearance here today is not only to redress my grievances, but to demand immediate action from this city council. 
If there's even a shred of justice left in your hearts amongst you, then as a sign of good faith to the people of the city of Marion, I would like to call for Chief Gitzmiller to be replaced with the police chief who actually cares about his oath and the people in his city. Um, he has shown by action and even said himself that he does not care about his oath. And by doing so, he has dishonored all those who have given life and limb to defend those liberties. And I know people in here have people served in the military and who have gone through horrible things that will never be the same again. And he's spitting on it. It's unacceptable. But even more alarming is that even though he allows his subordinates to operate with the same authoritative mentality, it just furthers the gap between the people and law enforcement. And historically, if this continues, it could potentially cost the city of Marion an immense amount of money and maybe even someone their lives. The fact is, is that the city of Marion needs a police chief that respects the people's rights and that disciplines his officers instead of covering up their faults. He has displayed poor leadership traits for years and has ruined who knows how many lives. Do the people of Marion a legitimate favor and fire him? If you don't comply with this simple request, then we will be forced to further question the competency of the council as a whole. And then we'll have to take uh, uh, take actions accordingly, where to, just to, so we can actually give some change. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else address council? Uh, may I? My name is Tom. I live south of Sioux City. Beyond that, I uh, wish to uh, express my Fourth Amendment right. Also, my First Amendment for freedom of speech, right to redress government. I'm not from here. I don't know anything about you. I just know that the corruption in this town has spread across this state verbally. Nothing I can do about it. Uh, except express to you that if you want to clean up your town, it's up to you people to do it. From what I hear, you have a corrupt chief of police. I don't know, I've never met the man. He might be the nicest guy in the world and he might be the biggest rear end. I imagine he's somewhere in between, but I like cops. I got, I got a couple of friends who used to be cops they are retired. There are good cops out there. There are bad cops out there, and there are corrupt cops out there. Atrociously corrupt. How do you get rid of them? It's up to you. And if it's not up to you, if it's not something that you're willing to do, the citizens can replace you. And then new council can end up replacing him. Which is what I would suggest happen. That... Uh, your reputation as a city, like I said, it stretches across the state and probably into other states nearby as well. So I'm not going to denigrate him. I don't know him, but I've been told and heard that he's correct. It's up to you to take care of that situation. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else address council? Okay, we'll close this part of the meeting. Move on to council comments. Hey again, everybody. Thanks so much for staying to the end of the video. Just wanted to give you guys a quick reminder to never ever talk to the police and always film the police and especially always film the Marion, Iowa Police Department. This has been BCNN, Real News Only.